This video covers the steps to utilize the Proxim Blue Connect smartphone application. Proxim Blue Connect application is used to configure the Orinoco AP9200R. Uh, it is available for both Android, uh, starting with Android uh, 7.0, uh, Nougat, and iOS, uh, Min has to be version 10. Uh, it also uses Bluetooth low energy to connect uh, the devices. Uh, max distance of 15 meters or 50 feet. Okay, so before we get started, um, let's kind of cover the uh, QR code uh, because uh, Proxa Blue Connect does use the uh, QR code. Okay, so as you can see, here's the code, right? And at the bottom here, we have uh, it says Proxim, and then we have the last six of the uh, MAC address, the Ethernet MAC address, as you could see right here. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and cover this. So uh, when you do the QR code, uh, you'll know what you're looking for. And when you do the Bluetooth, okay, it's also going to go ahead and pick up the same number. All right, uh, Proxim. And again, here is going to be a last six of our Ethernet MAC address. Okay, so let's go ahead and cover the uh, Proxim Blue Connect uh, software for both uh, Android and iOS. Uh, this is going to be uh, software to uh, connect to and manage the Edge product line. Okay, so right now we are on Android. As mentioned before, this is supported by, by both Android and iOS. I'm not going to go ahead and cover the uh, installation portion. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and run through the software itself. All right, so. Uh, let's go ahead and begin. Uh, go ahead and click on the icon. Okay. I'm going to go through this little welcome. All right, so it's going to have to uh, go through its paces here. Okay, this takes a little bit. Okay, so uh, in the beginning, you're going to get these two uh, permissions. Uh, Blue Connect would like to access your location. Uh, it's going to collect uh, uh, location data. Right, uh, it's gonna so we could fetch uh, the GPS uh, coordinates. Right, uh, this is gonna be if you're using the uh, GPS module for the Edge product line. Right, we're gonna go ahead and click OK. All right, and it's also gonna wanna access your again your uh, location. So we're gonna go click Allow. All right, so here is the main page. Right, let's go ahead and cover this really quick. So we have two options. Uh, we have Scan and we have QR code. Okay, so um, as mentioned before, uh, you're going to have to know your uh, Ethernet MAC address, or at least the last six of the Ethernet MAC address, right? So go ahead and click Scan. Okay, so what we have here is two Proxim radios. It's not going to tell you which one's which, okay? Uh, again, you're going to have to know what the MAC address is, and that was covered uh, uh, previously, All right? So go ahead and click Back. All right, and here is our QR scan. All right, now you're going to have to be fairly close to the QR scan, okay? Uh, the Bluetooth scan, because it is low energy, as covered before, it's about 50 feet, right? But the QR scan, obviously, you're going to have to be right next to the radio, all right? So we're going to go ahead and click the scan, all right? It's going to uh, ask us to take pictures and record videos, allow, all right? And then is the scan. You can see it picks it up automatically. All right, here is our uh, password. All right, the password is one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, click OK. Okay, so um, the radio is coming up, and uh, it does take a second or two for it to completely load. Uh, remember, it's uh, uh, not the fastest thing because it's uh, uh, low energy Bluetooth. Okay, so once it pops up, uh, here is the main screen. So it's going to uh, go over this really, really quick. Okay, up here we have a button that's going to take us back to the main screen. Uh, this guy over here is, when you press it, it's just going to tell you all the uh, passwords are set to default, so the ones you need to change. All right, uh, this guy over here is uh, tells us the version number. It also gives us the uh, pick a language. All right, and over here, uh, we cover, uh, it's just a disconnection from the device, okay? So over here, we have the actual details, 
All right, here's the access point uh, serial number. It's good to have the device name, the IP address. Here we have our info on 5 gig and 2.4. Okay, one of the cool things is that uh, it does give us our channel and it also gives us how many uh, wireless clients are connected to uh, to the access point, which is a, a pretty cool tool. Um, all right, click on the little hamburger buns. We have status configuration and we could do a reset back to factory and a reboot. All right, so let's go ahead and click configuration. Okay, so um, if you have a, uh, a configuration template, you could go ahead and use that device name, uh, location, local GPS. Uh, remember, that's going to be using the, uh, the GPS from, uh, from the phone. So um, as we covered before, if you allow the GPS to be used, that's what it's going to be using. Or if not, you could just go ahead and type in your own uh, 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 latitude and longitude. All right. Next. Yeah, we have uh, IP configuration by um, right now it's set to dynamic. You have two options, of course. You click static, click OK, and then it's going to give us uh, uh, IP address, mask, gateway, and DNS. Okay, and let's go ahead and whatever, make your changes and click next. In my case, I'm just go ahead and leave it as dynamic. All right, next. All right, so we're going to cover the 5 gigahertz configuration basic configuration then we're going to go ahead and cover the 2.4 okay let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the 5 gigahertz and the 2.4 gigahertz configuration all right so right the 5 gigahertz now we have country all right so by uh, since this is an fcc model you only have us here okay if you have uh, uh, other country codes uh, you're going to have other countries there operational mode okay so uh, the way that this works is um, here we have 802.11ac. The reason that it is is because we have the channel bandwidth is 80. Okay, so 80 is uh, uh, 802.11ac only supports 80 megahertz. But if we go to 40, okay, click OK. Now you're going to see the operational mode is going to change, and we're going to have more features. And of course, the same thing for uh, for 20 as well. Now 802.11ac. Um, it supports um, both 80, 40, and 20, but strictly, um, but strictly the 80 megahertz is 8211AC. So now we have 8211 and, and A. Okay, S select whichever one you want, and uh, if we go to 20, okay, we're going to have the uh, basically the exact same, exact same thing. Okay, it's uh, it's all uh, backwards uh, compatible, but again, at 80 megahertz, it's strictly 802.11ac. Okay, wait until this finishes here. All right, and you could see we have uh, 802.11a, okay, and uh, na, and then ac. So the 20 megahertz unlocks the strictly a portion. All right, so let's go ahead and click OK. Okay, again, here's our channel bandwidth. All right. Um, automatic channel selection okay preferred frequency okay um, of course with uh, you're gonna have different channels so if we went back up to 80 you're gonna have a different set of channels because there's a certain set of channels that only support it up to um, 80 megahertz okay and then we have the PMF which is uh, the protective uh, management frames okay by default it is enabled so let's go ahead and click next Okay, and we're basically going to see the exact same thing for uh, the 2.4. Okay, here's the country again. Does take a little bit of time for it to load. All right, so here's the country. Okay, so uh, operational mode. So we have strictly, uh, we have uh, 8 to 11, B, we have G, NG. Okay, uh, pure NG and pure N. Pure G means that it's only going to connect to G clients. There's no backwards compatibility. The same thing with N. Okay, with B, again, strictly B. Uh, with G, it's going to be uh, G and B. And then with NG, it's going to be B, G, and N. <laughs> okay, a lot of backwards compatibility going on here. Okay, so that's how that works but again pure g and pure n is strictly for 
uh, they're only going to connect to either G or A. All right. Let's go here. We have ACS again, enabled, disabled. Okay, your channel, and then again our uh, protected management frames. All right, and let's go ahead and click next. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and configure our uh, VAPs, our virtual APs. All right, so um, we give you an option for two, but there's a total of eight per uh, for um, eight for five gigahertz and uh, eight for two point four. Okay, so let's go ahead and go through here. All right, so we have the status enable. Okay, uh, we have the type. So we have AP. We have a, uh, a WDS A or B. That's wireless distribution. Okay, uh, that's bridging. So what you could kind of have here is you could let's just say in the first VAP you could select A. Okay. And you're gonna put in the MAC address of your, this is your wireless MAC address of the B radio, okay? Uh, you could do security, right? And then you have your uh, your IQME, which is the intelligent uh, multicast enhancement, okay? Now what you could do is you could go to your second VAP and you could go ahead, ahead and uh, have it run as an access point. So you could do a a bridge and a access point at the same time uh, there uh, definitely are some restrictions we have videos that cover uh, the WDS portion okay of course if you have any issues go ahead and uh, contact uh, uh, Proxim technical support and we'll be more than happy to assist you uh, so let's go go ahead and back to a here okay um, so in AP mode, all right, you have uh, just put in your SSID, security, the one that we created before, okay, max stations, uh, by default 64, but you can't go up to 128, that's, uh, that's a little bit too much, okay, you have the, again, your uh, IQME, all right, by default it's disabled, and we have the exact same thing here for, uh, for the second VAP, okay. Um, Again, uh, you can, if you want to add more, you have to log into the uh, GUI of the radio and go ahead and uh, add more virtual APs. Go ahead and click Next, and it's the exact same thing here, okay, for the, uh, for the two, uh, 2.4 gigahertz side. Um, you do have the WD, uh, WDS uh, option uh, for the 2.4, but... Uh, if you're going to do it, definitely recommend that you do it on the 5 gigahertz side and uh, maybe use that uh, the 2.4 as your clients, okay, because there's more bandwidth um, available on the 5 gigahertz, okay. And again, the exact same thing. And uh, last but not least, we have back where you could go back and then you have uh, commit and reboot, okay. So you press that, right? it's going to ask if you want to reboot, yes. It's going to go through its little paces. It's going to uh, it's going to give you a confirmation, like right here, confirmation saved, successful. And now the radio is going to go ahead and reboot. 